first of all, let me explain that title because it seems a little bit clickbaity, and it kind of is, but it actually isn't. And the background for that title is that about a year, year and a half ago, there was an entire slew of videos that were all, I am not Peter McKinnon, people sort of defending themselves from the accusation of, oh, you're just copying Peter McKinnon. But in this video, I wanted to say, I am copying Peter McKinnon in a lot of the things I do. And I wanted to tell you why I'm doing it and the fact that I think it's a good thing. Now let me make it very clear that Peter McKinnon isn't the only one that I'm copying. I copy all sorts of different techniques from all sorts of other YouTubers, other filmmakers, things that I'm trying to learn, trying to get better at. And I think it's very important to copy people because copying basically is how we learn. You learn to speak because you copied what your parents and your peers said. And I think it's so important that we don't mistake copying for plagiarizing. Just because you're taking concepts from someone, which is very important and developed, doesn't mean that you're plagiarizing them or taking anything away from them. For example, that jumping shot, that's not a Peter McKinnon shot, that's something that I actually lifted from Cody Warner. And what I do very often is I look for different aspects of people's films and I try it out in my own video. I try so many things out. If you go back to my older videos, like back when I started doing it, it was all straight up influenced by Peter McKinnon, Matty Hapoya, and DSLR Video Shooter. But as I grew, as I expanded my knowledge base, I started doing stuff like, I started skateboarding. I started doing more like just sort of jumping around and not ha always having to have transition shot. And I've sort of developed my own style to where you can see the influences of practically everyone that I watch on a regular basis, but my style isn't exactly like any of their style. Now, funnily enough, another person that I've been compared to and accused of copying uh, was actually Casey Neistat. And the funny thing about that is that I don't watch Casey Neistat's videos, but I end up doing things that Casey Neistat does even though I don't watch him because they're the things that work. And that's why most people are copying Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, Hanati Hapoya, and all these other guys is because it works. The stuff works. Originality doesn't exist anymore. Everything has been done before. So inadvertently, no matter what you do, you're kind of going to be copying someone in pretty much everything that you do. My opinion on that is not that it's a bad thing, that's a good thing. Copying people is actually good. And something to think about copying is that when you copy something from someone who's successful, you're copying something that works. When someone like Peter McKinnon, who's very successful on this platform, is doing things like slow motion, speed ramping, it's because it works. It captivates and retains people's attention and people want to watch his content. And so learning these things, learning what works from people who have already made it work is not a bad thing, it's a great thing. It's like the old adage, learn from someone else's mistakes so you don't have to make them. Well, learn from someone else's success so that you can succeed too. Trying new things and seeing if this would work for your style to adapt to the type of videos that you wanna do, I think it's totally fine. In fact, I think it's great. I mean, if you think you're going to develop your style being completely original, Get over yourself. That's not, that's not how humanity is. That's not how the world is today. If it hadn't been for Peter McKinnon doing slow motion, I wouldn't have even really known that it existed. Something that I found out recently is that I don't have time to do tons and tons of travel shots. I have a job, a wife, kids. There's just not enough time to spend hours and hours on every video filming lots of cutscenes. I like doing that, I enjoy it. I'm gonna do some when I leave this area right here, but I just don't have the time to do that every single video, so having a Cody Wano style jumping around, going right into the next talking segment is like totally fine with me now. And I've developed something from 
a way that not even something he taught, but just something that he did that has helped my videos get better and helped me be more consistent and be able to put out even more content. So in my opinion, if you're having trouble creating content, having trouble figuring out how to be unique, don't worry about it. You'll develop your style. If I tried to fit my style and the style that I wanted originally to have into doing these videos, I probably would have never been satisfied and ended up being disingenuous. Just people would not have enjoyed my videos. But because I figured out what worked in my videos and what didn't, I think I make decent content. My battery's almost dead, I gotta wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Keep an eye out on Cody's channel because he got another video featuring me coming soon. Cody Scott, not Cody Wano. People were actually confused with that two videos ago, so sorry about that. Cody Scott, I'll link him in the end screen and maybe put him in the description if I remember. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. that one from Sydney Dion. <laughs>